Hello, this is AstrologyNewsReport.com with your hosts, David Anton Savage and Ron Berger. Now we go to our third segment of this week's report, People in the News, where we will analyze the Vedic Astrology birth chart of a newsworthy person, place, or event. This week we've decided to analyze the birth chart of an event, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. We will use the techniques of interpreting an event chart called a Mohurtha to illustrate some of the Vedic astrological principles used to examine electional acts, which is to say, should I do or not do something that I have a choice in? When you are choosing the birth chart of an important endeavor, when something is to be initiated, Yes, and traditionally, for this chart we are going to examine the timing of when you start out on a journey, as being considered critical to the success of your journey, and the success of the purpose for which you are traveling. Flight number MH370 left the capital of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, at 41 minutes past midnight on Saturday, March 8th, and shortly thereafter the 777 jet with 239 people aboard, disappeared and has yet to be found. Ron, I know this is a loaded question, and hindsight is 2020. But if you saw a chart like this for a flight you were planning on boarding, would you have rebooked the date? Yep, definitely. Why take a chance? A bad muhurtha doesn't have to end in disaster. But this is definitely a chart that would have given me quite a bit of pause, because it is certainly not an auspicious chart for taking off in a jet, let alone anything else that would be deemed the beginning of something important. And since we know it was a flight that went wrong with a twist of extra drama and mystery attached to it, we are going to confine ourselves to why is this flight so star-crossed. I hate when this happens, Ron, but we are starting with an astrological cliché. Scorpio rising, the mysterious, deep, negative water sign that is a cult in nature and likes to keep its secrets. Hey, don't blame us, folks. We just plugged the information into our computers. Okay, well, not to give Scorpio a bad rap, but basically, yes, Scorpio does have the qualities you speak of. But a Muhurta chart has to show us a lot more than just being Scorpio rising for it to be damning. And this chart does, in spades. The Ascendant and its ruler are the most important factors in a Muhurta chart. And here we have Mars, the ruler of Scorpio, the ruler of the Ascendant, in a very bad way. It is placed quite poorly in the twelfth house, the house of loss, endings, failure, and ominously unknown places. Worse yet, Mars is also retrograde, which is a big no-no for the ruler of the first house of the Muhurtha chart. This factor by itself would cause an astrologer to advise the client to wait for a more auspicious beginning. And if by any chance you are not convinced yet, let's put another big red flag up for you. Mars is closely conjunct a first-rate malefic Rahu, the mouth of the dragon. The ruler of the event chart must not be conjunct a malefic. It's another big no-no when assessing any Muhurtha. Rahu is the significator of confusion, criminals, poisons, espionage, and the list goes on and on. We also see that the moon is very powerfully placed, exactly opposite the rising degree. In a Muhurtha chart, the seventh house represents your opposite number, usually the enemy or whoever else stands opposite to you. Here the moon can represent something like the natural elements. And of course, the moon is the significator of oceans in Vedic astrology. And the moon in this chart is the ruler of the ninth house, which is the house of long distance journeys. When anything is within a degree or two of anything else, whether it be a conjunction, opposition, a square, or other aspect, you get a much stronger indication for results, be they positive or negative. And even though an exalted moon is viewed as a good factor when judging a Muhurtha, the moon here cannot override the triple affliction for Mars. If anything, an exact opposition from the ruler of the ninth house suggests 
a heavy influence from another Ninth House theme, Destiny. Well, on that note, let's take a look at results. There is a very specific factor in a Muharta chart that signifies the end results, the outcome of the action, and this is the ruler of the fourth house. Oh, Ron, this looks bad indeed. The fourth house is Aquarius, making its ruler Saturn, which is, like the ascendant ruler Mars, in the twelfth house of loss, endings, and separation. And Saturn is also retrograde, which is an indication of failure, and its position is weakened by being at the very end of the sign, 29 degrees. So the planet, representing the outcome, is completely hammered and cannot help. And here again, as with Mars, couldn't get much worse for Saturn, which is crucial for the success of this Muharta chart. And how about having the Sun and Neptune in the fourth house? Can we say something about that? Neptune is, after all, a significator of mystery. Well, yes, I suppose you could use that, although Neptune is not part of the traditional rules of Vedic Muharta analysis because it's one of the modern planets. The Sun, on the other hand, is a general significator of authorities, governments, the leader. Of course, the governments are crawling all over this thing, and in something of a model, which might be Neptune or the Neptunian influence, also, uh, the sun could represent the pilot. So, the big question now is, will the plane ever be found? Will the reason for its loss ever be known? Can we find an answer in this chart? To answer your question, though, we have to see if we can find some resolution to the twelfth house, where both the Ascendant Lord and the Fourth Lord are posited in Libra, which is Venus's sign. So, I am going to assume that to find any hope we have to assess the condition of Venus in this chart, and we, we see that it is in the third house, the house of skillful techniques and efforts, and in Capricorn, which makes Saturn the ruler of the third. As such, Saturn and Venus are exchanging signs, so there is a powerful connection between the twelfth house of endings and the third house of skillful techniques. So where does that leave us? Well, in other words, the planet representing the third house of skill and effort, Saturn, is once again promising only failure. I don't want to dash your hopes, but actually, in order for a planet in a Muharta chart to bear positive fruit, it has to be under a benefic influence, something like the aspect of Jupiter, the planet of beneficence, or maybe for this situation, Mercury, the planet of information, would be helpful. Unfortunately, that's not happening in this chart. Instead, we have another tie-in, yet again, with the twelfth house of loss, endings, the unknown. So are you saying that there won't be an answer? Actually, I'm not saying that. A Muharta chart is more about picking a good time to begin something so that the endeavor will be a successful one. This chart is definitely saying that the time of beginning this journey, the time of departure, was about as bad as it could be. But reading into the chart additional details, past the fact of failure for the endeavor, is really asking a bit much from a Muharta chart. So all that can be proven astrologically with this Muharta chart, the chart for the journey, is that getting on that plane was a very risky bet and should have been avoided. Yes, David, if the world only had enough Vedic astrologers, airports could hire them to cast charts months in advance to avoid scheduling departures that would risk running into major problems. Ah, uh, Ron, but how does that old adage go? Astrologers predict and the gods smile. Uh, true that, David. Uh, but we will continue to employ this technique again for our audience for other upcoming events like the U.S. elections in November which I guess is 8 a.m. November 4th, 2014 in Washington, D.C. Yeah, uh, but until next week, thank you for checking in with astrologynewsreport.com.